Coming up, if you're considering the benefits of moving your on-premises VMware workloads to the cloud, we'll take a look at how you can discover and assess your Windows and Linux VMs, migrate your workloads and optimize them production. And what's more, you can also leverage the Azure hybrid benefit for Windows Server to use your existing Windows Server licenses in Azure and lower your costs by up to 40%. Now, running your VM in Azure IaaS gives you access to a global cloud platform. This translates to a number of advantages, from freeing up time spent managing your virtual machine hosts to now future-proofing your platform for scale to the ability to take advantage of the intelligent security in Azure with its machine learning and global monitoring to help you protect your apps running in Azure, on-premises, or wherever. Of course, there are some prerequisites to get started, and I'll walk through them. You'll need an Azure subscription, and there's a free trial to get you started. You'll want to start small to get experience with your apps, and so let's walk through the basics of the migration process to Azure. Here, I'm in my VMware vSphere environment, and as you can see, I have an application consists of multiple virtual machines in a three-tier configuration. Now, we're going to start with Azure Migrate, a new service we recently released to preview. This helps me find my on-premises VMs and application environments and assess them for migration to Azure. I started in the Azure portal by searching for Migrate and creating a migration project. Now, I'm going to click here on Discover and Assess. This will launch a two-step process. First, we're going to the discovery, which will literally discover your on-premises VMs using a virtual appliance called the collector. Once we select discovery, you'll also be prompted to download a collector appliance. This is a complete pre-configured OVA or open virtual appliance that you import into vSphere. Azure will generate you a unique project ID, which you'll need to supply when initiating your discovery. So make sure to copy your project ID and project key. Now, I've set up my Collector VM in the ESX environment. And from a remote browser, I'm logging into my Collector VM where we'll kick off the discovery of our on-premises environment. Keep in mind, this is a read-only inspection of your VMs and their metadata, including performance history, which we'll use for right-sizing in Azure. When you first launch the Azure Migrate Collector tool, you'll be asked to go through three primary steps. You're going to set up your prerequisites. It'll prompt you to accept the terms. Check that you're connected to the internet. Make sure your time is in sync with the internet time server. And of course, make sure you have a current version of the Power CLI installed. If not, it will automatically install it for you. I'm going to click here on Continue and move to Discover Virtual Machines. Now, under Virtual Machine Discovery, here is where you're going to provide your credentials for the vCenter server that you're attaching to and the read-only Discover of your, your machines. You can see we've done that, and we'll click on Connect. Next, we'll select Project. By selecting Project, you're asked to enter the migration project key that was generated in Azure when you created your migration project. From here, once you clicked Continue, it will kick off the discovery by reading the metadata of your VMs, and you can watch the progress in complete collection. Let's go ahead and do that too. Now, one thing I want to point out is note that there's no agent installed here. We're simply talking to the vCenter server, reading the configuration data for the virtual machines, the virtual processors, memory size, disk, network configuration. Also, collect the performance history of the virtual machines, such as CPU utilization, memory, disk, networking, which we'll use for right-sizing later. Now, this will take a few minutes, depending on the number of VMs, so I'll use a collection I ran earlier. Back in my migration project in Azure, I can see that I have 215 virtual machines that have been discovered and I'm going to go ahead and move to step two, which is to create an assessment. I'm going to click on Create Assessment for the multi-tier application we saw earlier in the vSphere environment. I'll give the assessment group a name, like Mechanics, and I can choose to select all VMs, but in this case, I know the ones that I want to migrate, which all have the word tier in the name. So I'm going to do a search for tier, and I'm going to select all of these. And when I click the Create Assessment button, this will create the group with these VMs and compute the assessment. I'll click on the assessment, right, you can see here called Mechanics, and then select Azure Readiness. Here, you can see the detailed view of the VMs and other properties. You'll see all of your selected VMs and an assessment of whether or not the VM is ready to be hosted in Azure. Keep in mind, if the VM is not ready for migration, it will give you a reason and point you to documented guidance on the next steps. Now, if we move to cost details, you can look here 
at the aggregate monthly cost estimates for compute as well as storage. And you'll see the corresponding Azure VM size recommended below based on the performance history of the VM details and storage requirements and more for each VM. If we go back to Azure Readiness, you'll notice that most of my VMs can be migrated by Azure Site Recovery, or ASR, which is our primary migration tool. Now, you'll notice here in this first virtual machine, Data Tier VM01, it is detected that I have a VM running a database. In fact, let's widen this a little bit. You can see in this case, MySQL, and it recommends that I use the Azure Database Migration Service. Now, we'll cover this on a future Mechanics episode. If you click on Edit Properties, you can tweak things like the target Azure location, the currency, and you can also factor in existing discounts like the Azure Hybrid Benefit to estimate the 40% discount into your migration cost assessment. Also, one more thing to call out here. If you're unaware of your application topology and dependencies, you can download an agent to get a dependency map of the VMs in your group. We'll also cover this scenario in a future Mechanics episode too. So now, I'm going to go back to my assessment overview, and I'm going to export the assessment report. Now, this report gives me the information that I need to set up my Azure environment, including Azure VM readiness, VM sizing, and cost estimates for compute and storage. And I can drill into this per VM. And keep in mind, if you need to show the folks in finance, they really love to see stuff like this in an Excel spreadsheet. So now that I feel good about my discovery and assessment, I'm ready for migration. For VM replication and migration, we use Azure Site Recovery in the Azure portal. This service is typically used for disaster recovery scenarios, as the name suggests, and the same process is used for migration. You'll also see us streamlining both the ASR and Azure Migrate tools in the near future to drive more cohesiveness between the discovery, assessment, and migration. Azure Site Recovery will follow four steps. Number one, set up your target environment in Azure using the information from the assessment report. Two, download and import Azure Site Recovery Configuration Server and Process Server into your vSphere environment. This is essentially the replication assistant for Azure. Third, replicating the VMs that you want to migrate to Azure. And finally, switching your production environment to Azure once you've tested everything in Azure. So let's start. If you're new to Azure, you'll need to do a few things to set up the target environment that should sound familiar before we can start replicating. First, you'll need to set up a place to store your VMs. In Storage Accounts, click Add and then give it a name. Choose the kind of storage, performance, and subscription. I'm going to go ahead with the defaults. Then create or assign a resource group and pick the location. We'll skip the virtual network here, but we're going to configure that next. So now, let's add a virtual network. In the Virtual Networks blade, we'll click Add, and then we'll give our network a name, address space, resource group assignment, etc. Now, I'm skipping the address number assignment to save time, but here you'd need to assign the number of addresses needed up to 256. The last step is to prepare to receive replicated data is to set up the Recovery Services Vault. I'll go to Recovery Services and add a vault. I'll select Add again, give the vault a name, assign a resource group, and a location of Western United States number two. Now, we have the area, a prerequisite set up to start replicating our VMs. With your Azure target environment set up, the next step is to prepare your on-premises VMware environment for VM replication and test failover and to ultimately migrate production to Azure. In Site Recovery, you'll open the Site Recovery blade to see the steps for preparing your infrastructure. We're going to select Prepare Infrastructure, then select the protection goal, which is to state the environment source, target, and virtualization details. Now, we're going to click on Deployment Planning. We did this during the Azure Migrate step, so we can select, yes, I've done it. Here is where you point to the target source. If you've already done a migration or site recovery, your existing vCenter environments are listed here. If not, click on Configuration Server, and that blade highlights all the resources needed to get replication running. As with the discovery, you'll download an OVF template to manage the ongoing replication of your VMs. This appliance will replace Azure Site Recovery's existing unified setup if you do not already see it in your Azure tenant. ASR uses a configuration server and process server to coordinate the replication between your on-premises vSphere server and Azure Storage. 
Data is only replicated to your Azure storage account, and no running components are needed in Azure until you perform test or production failover to spin up VMs in Azure. Now, both environments are connected and ready for the command to begin replicating. To ensure you only replicate what you want, you go back to the Azure portal to enable replication. Now, I've already gone through this process to save time, and you can see there are six replicated items already, but I'll show you how to enable one VM. I'm going to select Replicate to show you how this works. First, you select your source, your vCenter server, and this is important as you can have multiple vCenter hosts that can be set up as the source. Then you select the configuration of your target environment in Azure, your storage account that you set up earlier to replicate your VMs, and we'll configure the network in just a moment. From here, you're going to select the VMs that you want to replicate. And in this case, I'm going to do a search for Frontier to pull up my VM that I'm looking for. There it is. I'm going to click OK. And now we can select my storage options. I can select the disks that I want to replicate. And in this case, I'm just going to keep the default disks to replicate and use this account. Now here, you can set your replication policy and settings and click here to enable replication. Now, in the interest of time, I've already started the process of replicating my six VMs, as I mentioned earlier. Now we need to set up a recovery plan to automate the steps to get your migrated VMs running. To set up the recovery plan, go to the recovery plans blade, select Add Recovery Plan, or Plus Recovery Plan. We're going to go ahead and give it a name, like Mechanics, and select the target Microsoft Azure. We'll use the Resource Manager model, as we've done throughout the process. Now we'll select our VMs. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of them. And Azure will create a default plan that spins all of these VMs up simultaneously. Now, in my case, I'll customize the plan. And here is where you can define stages of recovery. So, for example, if you want the back end of your multi tier application to come up first, then the middle tier, and then the front end, you'd set up those stages all right here. So, OK, now everything is almost set up. My VMs are replicated. I've created a staged recovery plan, and now to complete the migration. I'm actually going to fail over to Azure and just keep my VMs there. Now, before I complete the migration, I can review each VM and specify my compute and network configuration settings for my VMs before I migrate them. In my Recovery Services Vault for the app I'm migrating, I'm going to click into the Replicated Items, and here I'll see the status of my replicated VMs. You'll notice Data Tier VM02 isn't healthy but since it's a mirror of VM01, I'm OK with that right now. I'll select Data Tier VM01, then Compute and Network. And here you can see I have a comparison of what I have in my data center and what Azure has assigned. You can see here on the right-hand side, you'll see an Azure VM size selected by default. But you can change this with the information from the Azure Migrate Assessment we did earlier. Under Network Properties is where we'll attach the replicated VM to your selected Azure network. All you need to do is select the target network that you created earlier. And also, we estimated the cost savings with Azure Hybrid Benefit for Windows Server. Here is where I'm going to apply it. So I'm going to do that, confirm it, and click Save. Now you can do this for each of your VMs. In future, as we integrate Azure Migrate with ASR, the information from your assessment will be automatically integrated. Once you save your changes and go back to your recovery plan, you can then do a test migration, test failover, which allows you to test if your VMs are running in Azure in an isolated environment. Once you've tested your failover, you can then use the failover option to move the production VMs to Azure. Here, it will make sure, in fact, it will even ask you and verify that you've tested the failover ahead of time. In this case, you can choose the recovery point and whether you're going to shut down VMs before beginning. We recommend that you take the source application offline in the on-premises data center during the migration window to ensure zero application data loss as you migrate VMs to Azure. Now, after clicking OK, your virtual machines are running in Azure. And as you can see right here, the virtual machines from my VMware ESX environment are now running in Azure. I'll do one final search here using Tier, and everything is running. So that was an overview of how to migrate your VMware Windows Server workloads to Azure. You'll see us streamlining this process more and more over the coming months, and we welcome your feedback on the Azure Migrate tool, which is in preview at the link shown. You can also visit the Azure Migration Center for more information. And of course, once your workloads are in Azure, 
Now you have a vast array of options open up for you. In fact, you can learn more at the playlist shown. Thanks for watching.